Hey guys and welcome back to my channel, New York Toy Fair is here and with it we have some brand new awesome reveals for the Transformers Studio Series line. After having some rather lacklustre reveals in recent years at Toy Fair, I'm sure we can all agree on that Hasbro definitely delivered with this year's New York Toy Fair in giving us some of the best Transformers Studio Series reveals we've got since the line first debuted. Now the majority of the reveals that I'll be discussing in today's video we did already know of, however one that came as a major surprise to me was the Transformers Bumblebee Cybertronian Deluxe Class Cliff Jumper and oh my the figure looks absolutely incredible. We got official images of Leader Class Overload as well as Voyager Scrapper and Voyager Class Skipjack. We also have images of a Deluxe Class Topspin, Deluxe Class Dark of the Moon Soundwave and my two personal favourites Voyager Class Sentinel Prime and Voyager Class Blitzwing. This year's New York Toy Fair will definitely go down in history as being one of the best for the Transformers Studio Series line, so without further ado, let's begin breaking down some of the reveals that were showcased today. Kicking things off with the Deluxe Class Assortment, the first figure that I'll be discussing is a figure that I have previously discussed, that being the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen satellite version of Soundwave, and I've got to say that with these official images from Hasbro, my opinions on this figure have definitely shifted to a more positive light, as we can now finally see him in his more accurate looking satellite mode. Initially, the only image we got of him was within his robot mode, which whilst it looked fairly nice, it wasn't accurate to the on-screen movie appearance, However, with Soundwave now fully displayed within his satellite mode, I can definitely say that this figure does not disappoint whatsoever. It does appear that he will in fact include a transparent clear blue display base, which I think is fantastic as the satellite Soundwave is rather difficult to display without a display base. I think that the satellite mode looks quite nice as well. It's got some nice detailings and I definitely am a fan of the metallic blue paint apps that they've used. And it does also appear that on the satellite pauldrons there will also be some nice silver paint apps on them as well. Taking a look at Soundwave's head sculpt, it looks very reminiscent of the Revenge of the Fallen movie with the red visor look which I actually prefer rather than the look that he had in Dark of the Moon. We've also got a rather nice looking robot mode. As stated previously, this isn't accurate to the movie so this is merely just for the sake of giving him a transformation. It does the job fairly nicely and does replicate Soundwave's appearance to a nice degree. It does appear as if though this will borrow a knight aesthetic and will in fact have some ankle rock joints which is good to see carry over into the Studio Series Deluxe line. So definitely a really cool looking figure and it's great to be finally filling out some of the Decepticon ranks for our Revenge of the Fallen movie toy line. The next deluxe class figure that we have a look at here is the already shown Transformers Dark of the Moon deluxe class top spin. However, here obviously we have the more official promotional stock photo. Once again, we are able to see the details in a much more clearer format within this photo. As stated previously, I think the head sculpt on this looks really well done with the very humanoid looking hair design. I also do like how the smokestacks do flare out to the shoulders and he has also got some nice detailings with the pincers and the blaster accessories which do appear to be in fact removable. We've also got some nice sculpted in detailing on the arms as well as well as in the chest section. I'm actually quite surprised to see how much detailing is going on in the chest and it does appear as if though he'll have some nice silver and blue paint apps as well. So definitely a really nice looking top spin figure within robot mode, checking out the image of his vehicle mode. Once again, I think that this mode also looks just as good as it did in the robot mode. We are able to tell here that the weapons that top spin was in fact holding in robot mode are just the side and top roof machine guns, so they do appear as if though they will be removable for the transformation. I've got to say that this NASCAR definitely does look a lot more accurate than that of the original Dark of the Moon version, specifically the front section as well as the hood. We've got that exposed engine piece and some really nice looking details going on there as well. So definitely a very heavily armoured up vehicle, much like we saw in the movie. And we've also got some nice licensing detailing on there, such as the Impala and some other licensing along the side of the vehicle and on the side of the wheels. So a really nice looking NASCAR as a whole. I think Top Spin's going to be just as strong as the Deluxe Class Dark of the Moon Roadbuster was. So really and truly, all we have to wait for now is the announcement of Leadfoot, which I do imagine is inevitable. And we will have our complete set of movie wreckers. And for a figure that definitely took me by surprise was the Transformers Bumblebee Deluxe Class Cybertronian version of Cliff Jumper. 
I was not expecting this figure to be released at all, at least not in the near future. And when it was unveiled at the live Transformers panel, I was absolutely gobsmacked. This figure looks absolutely fantastic. A really nice faithful representation of how Cliff Jumper briefly appeared within that Bumblebee movie. I think that the head sculpt absolutely nails what we see in the movie, as well as his overall chest design. He does look fairly clunky in the back, however that is inevitable due to the way that these figures do in fact transform. He does appear to include the same Stinger Blaster that was present on the Jeep Bumblebee, however that's not a deal breaker for me whatsoever. He's got some really nice smooth panels for the legs as well as the feet which look really nice and I'm a massive fan of the figure's overall colour scheme. With the announcement that we are in fact getting this Cybertronian version of Cliff Jumper, it's only a matter of time before we get a repaint and redeco of this into the B127 Cybertronian version of Bumblebee, however it's great that Cliff Jumper gets to own this mould the first time round and that he is in fact getting his own distinctive mould. I'm thoroughly impressed with this latest release by Hasbro and am honestly so surprised that they've done this. With the announcement that we are in fact getting Cliff Jumper, I'm sure that that does open the doors for potentially getting an RC or some of the other characters such as Ironhide or Ratchet all featured on that Bumblebee solo movie Cybertronian scene. Here we have an image of Cliff Jumper in his Cybertronian vehicle mode and once again although we never saw Cliff Jumper actually transform within the movie this was a very similar alt form to that of what Bumblebee was when we were first introduced to him on Cybertron so there is no doubt that this will in fact make itself over to the repaint list and actually be redecoded as Bumblebee but taking a look at the vehicle mode it does look very stylistic and futuristic in its design. I really do like some of the sleek and elegant panel lining detailing as well as the transparent clear piece of plastic in the center with the red strip as well as that really nice silver engine detailing at the front as well. Definitely a really distinctive looking figure this one will turn out to be and I'm sure that it'll be fantastic to finally have a movie representation of Cliff Jumper up on our shelves. So definitely a very strong looking deluxe class figure so far. So here we have the completed deluxe class lineup for Wave 3 all of which was announced at this year's New York Toy Fair. Personally, I'm so thankful to see that there are no repaints on this deluxe list whatsoever, nor any Bumblebee repaints. It's great to see that each of these figures are distinctive new moulds and each of them new characters into the line as well. Revenge of the Fallen Soundwave has greatly improved just by taking a look at that satellite mode. I think the top spin looks fantastic. However, the one that super surprised me was of course Cliff Jumper, and I really cannot wait to get that figure in hand. Swiftly moving on from from the deluxes, let's take a look at some of the Voyagers. Firstly, here we have Voyager Class Scrapper. I won't go into too much detail on this figure as I did already give you my in-depth thoughts and analysis on this one when we took a look at it over at Wonder Festival. My thoughts still retain from that video. I still think that this could potentially be one of the best constructor con figures to come out of the Devastator Ensemble. This looks really well done in its robot mode and I'm a massive fan of the abstract nature to the figure's design as well with the asymmetrical arms as well as the very asymmetrical alien bug type of head design. I think that this figure is going to turn out really, really nicely just by going from some of these official images and some of the in-hand ones that we got a few weeks back at Wonder Festival. Here we have a high-res image of Sentinel Prime. This is the same image that I took a look at yesterday from that Walmart leak. However, this time we can see the figure in greater detail. We can in fact see that he will in fact have a really nice looking head sculpt. And I've got to say that judging from this image, it does appear that this transformation too will be quite complicated as well as there doesn't really appear to be too much fire truck kibble on him at all unless it all does store in the backpack however from what I can see from this image the back does appear rather clean it is merely just the cape sections which are in fact accurate to the movie there is still no word on whether or not this figure will include his ion blaster or his shield however from this image we can see that he will be wielding the double bladed sword which is okay in my eyes just as long as Sentinel has some type of weapon to wield. So definitely another figure that I'm really looking forward to as well. Sentinel was one of my favourite characters from Dark with the Moon, so it's great to finally get him in a more accurate Studio Series edition to go along with some of your other figures that have already been released. And then just really quickly taking a look at Sentinel in his Rosenbauer fire truck. Once again, another really nice rendition of how he appeared in the movie with some really nice looking details actually on the side as well as the Rosenbauer logo, the 316 number as well as another Rosenbauer 
and Bauer logo at the far end. We can also see some nice fire truck detailings at the front, such as the hose, the larger hose on top, as well as the side view mirrors. We've also got some nice details at the front of the vehicle mode as well. Definitely a really nice looking distinctive fire truck. I'll be eager to see how this figure scales with some of the other ones, seeing as this is a Voyager. Initially, I did believe this to be a leader, just seeing how large Sentinel was in the movie. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not they chose the right option in putting him in the Voyager scale and whether or not he'll actually be the right scale or if they should have opted for a leader. So far from these images this figure definitely does look very promising and as stated previously but besides the constructor cons and now cliff jumper this figure is definitely on my most anticipated list. Very quickly talking over another constructor con which was announced that of course being the Voyager class skipjack this figure is merely just a direct repaint of the Voyager rampage however I was a massive fan of that mold so we'll be sure to pick this one up and seeing as this figure is now done in the more constructor con accurate yellow to go along with the accurate looking devastation in the movie I'll definitely be sure to use this limb as the devastator leg and then just use rampage on his own this definitely is a really nice looking repaint and will definitely be one that I can see flying off shelves as at least here in the UK rampage was a very hard voyager to come by and moving on to the final voyager to be revealed I'm sure I can be confident in saying that I did save the best reveal for last here we have the voyager class blitzwing a figure that fans have been craving for ever since he made his debut in the Bumblebee movie and I definitely think it's safe to say that this figure doesn't disappoint at all. The first thing that really surprised me when seeing this figure in person for the first time from these images was the level of detail and accuracy Hasbro actually got to making this figure. This looks almost perfect to how Blitzwing appeared within the movie almost even down to the accessories. I'm so surprised that they managed to replicate the accurate detailing within the cockpit. Blitzwing does have a very complex cockpit design within the film and it's been replicated here perfectly. It's great to see that he will in fact include his blaster weapon which will just slide over the top of the hand so you won't have to remove the arm. It is literally just a separate piece that slides over the top. The face sculpt looks fantastic. I think that the color variation too has been done really nicely as well. It doesn't appear that this figure will be too bland of a plastic I imagine that they'll use a very similar plastic to that of perhaps Siege Starscream or even a slightly lighter shade of grey just as Blitzwing was borderline on white within the movie. There's also some nice red and blue highlights throughout the figure as well and there's even some nice detailing on the actual toes of the figure themselves picking out some of the landing gear that Blitzwing did in fact have on the feet. Taking a look at Blitzwing within his vehicle mode, once again this is also quite a nice representation to what we saw within the Bumblebee movie. Out of the two modes, I definitely think that this will probably be the weakest mode. It does appear as if though he'll have quite a lot of kibble towards the rear end of the aircraft vehicle. However, I've got to say that considering the complex design that Blitzwing has in the robot mode, I'm quite honestly surprised that they managed to replicate it to that level of accuracy. So to have some kibble within jet mode, quite frankly, doesn't bother me at all. And as I stated previously, it's still does resemble to what we see in the movie to a quite a nice degree as well. It's great that we'll finally have some of the main Decepticon cast completed for the Bumblebee movie. Now we've got Blitzwing, Dropkick and Shatter. So now with the announcement of Cliffjumper, hopefully they can begin delving into some of the Decepticons that featured on the Cybertron battle scene. And then finally, the final figure to be revealed at this year's New York Toy Fair was a figure that we already got a look at at Wonder Festival, that being the final Constructicon Leader Class Overload. And as stated in a previous video, I still retain my opinions in saying that this could be a really strong looking figure. This definitely has got a fantastic design and it's great to see them really sticking towards that source material that was provided from some concept art. This figure is one of the more abstract looking constructor cons with his four tentacle like arms and I really think they've done a good job in utilising some of that concept material in making this one of the most distinguishable Decepticon designs of all time. I think that this is a really nice looking leader class whilst it may be slightly lacking in terms of height it definitely makes up for it in terms of how much plastic is used and considering this is going to be the vital component in pulling together all of the devastator limbs i'm sure that the plastic grade will definitely be to an incredible high standard as saying that the detailing on this looks really nice as well we can pick out some of the details in the face sculpt as well as some of the distinguishable pincers a really nice looking leader figure and as stated before seeing as overload never appeared within the movie this could potentially be a red herring for us seeing even a leader class devcon in the future 
as DevCon is rather similar in terms of overloads design, so I don't think it would be too difficult for them even to just retool this figure, which already appears to have quite a lot of engineering and design going to it, and make it into a DevCon. So that is something that I'll definitely be looking forward to if they happen to go that route. But just taking a look at Overload himself, I'm thoroughly impressed with this and cannot wait to add him to the collection. So there you have it. That is my full coverage on this year's New York Toy Fair 2020 Transformers Studio Series reveals. I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing all of the latest reveals and we got some fantastic reveals. Cliff Jumper definitely is one that stands out to me the most as I was not expecting him at all. But with all that being said, some of the other reveals such as Blitzwing and Topspin, even Sentinel Prime, have all come as a massive shock to me and each and every one of these figures in their own right look really well done. The Studio Series is shaping up to be one of the best, if not the best movie line of all time and sticking with the trend from these latest reveals, I can definitely say that the line is going incredibly strong. I do hope to see more reveals in the future, however seeing as at how many reveals we did get at this year's New York Toy Fair, I wouldn't expect any reveals reveals for a very long time as there's four voyages here, three deluxes and one leader class. I think that the deluxe line has never been any stronger than this. All of the figures are their own unique molds. Cliff Jumper, whilst I'm sure he'll be recolored into a bumblebee, is his own unique mold which is great to see. Soundwave looks a lot better in his satellite mode. Top Spin definitely looks like he's going to be a great figure. Blitzwing and Sentinel Prime are standout voyages for me too. They both look incredibly movie accurate, specifically Blitzwing. I do love that we're getting a repaint of Rampage in the form of Skipjack. That's one of my favourite Voyager figures and my favourite constructor con to date. But with all that being said, Voyager class Scrapper looks incredibly strong as well. So I'm wondering whether or not Scrapper will in fact dethrone Rampage in being my favourite Voyager constructor con. So I really cannot wait to pick that figure up to see what it's like in person. Person and finally complete the two year awaited Studio Series Devastator. I hope you enjoyed my coverage and if you did please let me know down in the comment section below. Also be sure to let me know what were some of your favourite reveals of this year's New York Toy Fair and whether or not you were satisfied with the reveals or whether or not it left you wanting more. Thanks for watching.